deliciously continental biscuits. multi-talented lot on the show tonight. There's the author, actor, comedian and filmmaker Stephen Fry. And then the comedian, actress, talk show host and jewellery designer Joan Rivers. Music from the Scissor Sisters. Now, my first guest is a singer-songwriter who sold 85 million records worldwide. In June, he'll be the first artist to play the new Wembley Stadium, always providing he doesn't drive there. Ladies and gentlemen, George <laughs> Michael. At least. <laughs> yeah, it was very nice, wasn't it? Very nice indeed. So and the family aren't even here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so it's sum it up for recent times. Uh, today, Brent Magistrates Court, tomorrow, Wembley Stadium. That's about it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, I think they changed the court because that Brent Magistrates Court is literally across the road, isn't it? From Wembley Arena. Is it? I think so. Oh, right. I think so, yeah, but they changed that. Um, yeah, I think I'm going back to Willesden. There's a lot riding on it, isn't there, really? Um, well, what's riding on it, really? I mean, uh, I'm really not allowed to say very much. Well, about I know it you can't talk about the specific case. Yeah, at believe all. me, I want to. I really, really want to. Yeah, you can't. It's <laughs> you, see. you know me. Uh, but you pleaded guilty. Yeah, I pleaded guilty because I, you know, because I did something stupid. I'm, you know, I'm fine. I was actually really relieved to take responsibility. It's just a matter of. What, what do you mean by that? Well, to be perfectly honest, not to try to paint myself as a, a saint of any kind, but I really, truly. Um, have lived my life the way I was brought up to, kind of the way that my mother looked at things, which is really the worst thing you could do is to be um, thoughtless about other people. And, you know, I've pretty much lived by that. And I knew that I had stepped outside of that. And there are things that, that will be talked about in court that I can't talk about now. Yeah. So, back, basically, once I realised that I could put my hands up at the same time, as not accepting the, the, the actual, um, what I was accused of. Once I realised I could do that, um, then, then I did it as soon as I could, you know. But, I mean, the, the possibility would be, remains, that, that you, you, you might have a situation whereby, after the hearing, uh, you might not be able to go to America. It might affect your visa. You've thought about well, that, quite obviously. Well, you know, we've booked an American tour. It would be really sad. It would be really sad. The tour is booked. I don't think it's been announced yet, but it's sad. We, um, it would be very sad if I can't fulfil those. Mm. Um, but I'm hoping that that won't be the case, you know, I'm just hoping that won't be the case. Mm. I mean, w when, you, when you look back at, uh, at this pattern you're talking about, this, this behaviour, is there a sense in which, almost unwittingly in a sense, you kind of caught that kind of attention? Well, I have to ask myself, don't I? You do. I mean, I have to ask myself whether... I know I have a very self-destructive tendency. Since my mother died, I've got to be honest, that's kind of made itself clear in other ways. Um, I think there has to be some element of, in the, of that in why I was basically letting, not taking care of myself, really. Um, but actually, the, the reality was that it was a problem that had been going on for years, and you find an alternative to that pain um, in the form of a prescribed drug. It's very difficult to give that drug up. Um, and sometimes, um, sometimes the side effects of those drugs are not, 
are not good, but you have to actually deal with them. And, and I think I wasn't dealing with them. So I, think, so I think ultimately I was being irresponsible by allowing myself a situation that um, created constant um, insomnia, basically. I can say that without talking about the drugs. I mean, in all honesty, you know, if they, they obviously will take away my licence because I've pled guilty. Well, that's a cert. That's a given. That's a given, yeah. But in all honesty, I haven't had a licence for the last year or so because I've been stuck in the house because the, the house is, there have been people outside the house, cameras outside the house, almost constantly. That, so, so, you know, really, I've, so already, I've one... already done a year without. <laughs> but there's a, there's a quote here which, which you, you made. You said, uh, uh, talking after the court case, you said there are people around who would like me to experience a tough time. Mm -hmm. Who are they? Well, media, really. Oh, the media? Media, yeah. Just the media? Yeah, I think so. I don't think... Um, I honestly don't think the public um, really wants to see me have a tough time. If I, if I had seen the pictures that I saw in the newspapers and read what I read, I would probably uh, feel like, you know, something needed to be done about it. But the truth of the matter is, you know, um, the media does what the media does and things are very much not what they seem. Um, but you know the media is looking for you. Yeah, right? I do. Yeah. You, see, you see, the point, the thing about you, George, it, it seems to me is that, you know, going back to this thing about being this, holding yourself up as a kind of hostage to this kind of situation. I mean, there's, there's another quote from, from one of the gay, gay publications who said, George Michael's biggest crime is less to do with his trouser activity than, than his big mouth. Mm -hmm. and, and you do find it difficult at times to, to sort of, uh, you, I mean, you, you are outspoken. I think I'm of my generation, only most of my generation have got no balls anymore. <laughs> Basically, you know, I think my, my generation were taught that it was okay, especially as a musician, to speak your mind. And we're living in a time when it's not okay, and, we, and people are trying in an effort to um, return to family values, to pretend that some of the things that happened between 1960 and 1985 didn't happen. And, and one of those things was basically the introduction into the culture of marijuana. And, you know, we could sit here with any number of of policemen and doctors and they would all tell you that if everybody who um, had a dependence on alcohol changed their mind and had a dependence on weed, the world would be a much, much easier place well, to I live mean, in. Well, would it be? Because, I mean, the recent evidence suggests that it has a direct link to, on to, young de people, on, to yeah. depression. Yeah, the direct link but, but, between but young but people. Given, but given that you're right, and, yeah. and, the thing, and given that... What no, I'm saying is that nobody ever came uh, home stoned no, and beat up well, their wife, well, 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 let me say that there won't be many people in this audience who will be shocked yeah. by the fact you take marijuana. Yeah. But what, what they might look at is when you appeared on the South Bank show yeah. and lit a split. Now, yeah. that, I mean, that... It seems to be. You to have be. to realise something that actually I hope I have to. This is something about timing, right? And timing has got to be good. Well, I do. What people don't realise is that me <laughs> puffing away in Madrid, that was filmed before I made an idiot of myself at the beginning of the tour. But it came out after. I see. So it was filmed literally days before I did that Are you again. Saying that you wouldn't have done it. And obviously I wouldn't have done it you if I'd known I was going to screw up like that again. I would not have done that. Um, but. You know, I'm not going to pretend that my drug of choice is not marijuana, because it is. I don't drink. I very rarely drink. Yes. I've never, ever drunk and... Yeah. and uh, I've never, um, ever had anything on, uh, in terms of a breathalyzer test. And believe me, as George Michael, you get more than you would do. You know, you get stopped over the years more than you would do as an ordinary citizen, I think. And I've never tested anything but zero, you know, for, yeah. for alcohol. Yeah. And I'm not going to pretend that this is, this is not the truth. I, th I think I also made the point that it's a terrible drug at certain points in your life, i.e. when you're young and when you have things to achieve. You don't want something that chills you out like that. So I'm, I'm, it's not like I'm sitting there advocating it for everyone, but I'm not going to be, an, I'm not going to pretend in the way that this whole, the th whole, I mean, the drugs that are going about in society, we don't need to worry about marijuana, mm. you know. Um, and I think for a 43-year-old gay man, who exactly am I supposed to be influencing, you know, mm. really? Let's talk about the tour, because it's been going well, hasn't it? Been... Oh, it's been amazing. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, you know, when talk... we talked about it last yeah. year, yeah. it was just a, 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 an idea, really, that was just taking shape. But yeah. it's been the most incredible. Well, what about Wembley, of course, coming up? Because and that is going to be spectacular. I mean, the first time the new stadium is a sensational new stadium. How many people are going to be there? Do you know? Is it, is uh, it, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, because right. obviously the stage, the stage comes out, takes, it, yeah. takes part yeah, of it the... It's going to be a big crowd, But it's going to be a, a lot occasion. of people. And, and I'm so proud that I'm going to be opening. It's yeah. like my dream come true. Yeah. And last year, when they didn't get it in time, they didn't open it in time, I think it was the second year in a row, they said they were going to finish it. And last year... 
I think Robbie Williams and the Stones and Bon Jovi were all on tour and wanting to play and stuff. And when I heard that the stadium wasn't ready, little kind of something in my brain went, hmm, <laughs> you could get really lucky because none of those people will be touring next year. And you might be. So I <clears throat> approached the um, I approached the directors of uh, Multiplex, I think it is, the oh, people that that's right, they built, the built the stadium. Yeah, uh -huh. And I said, look, I know you guys are... are, are fighting against time, but if you want to give me th this uh, opening gig, I don't mind when it happens, you know, I'm not going to sue you for being late or anything, I just want to do it when it opens, I, w I want it to be me. And um, they came down and saw an Earl's Court show and, and soon after said yes, which was, I was just, bluff. it's a dream, it's a dream come true. Well, the tickets have sold out so quicker than any other t tickets that had ever been sold, and, and uh, Let's, let's have a look, maybe why, because let's have a look at, at some uh, footage from, from your tour and see what they can expect, those who go to Wembley. You got to go to the city. Do all the demons go away when you're on stage? Yes, it's a strange thing. It's the most natural place on earth for me. Is it? It really is. Yeah. You know, the happiest there. Yeah, and, and uh, as ever, you know, if I'd done a rehearsal today with six or seven cameras, I would have been nervous. It's just the way it works. But yes. when I have a, an audience there, it's the easiest thing in the world for me. I think the question that a lot of people would, would ask you is, is, is this, that, that you see that there, you see the adoration, the adulation, you see a very successful young man, mm -hmm. you know, a man in his prime, mm -hmm. uh, singing there and you know, a successful songwriter, and they wonder what the problem is. Well, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. The problem is, in, in reality, the problem is that we have a very, very inquisitive media, and I'm, I seem to kind of meet a lot of different um, requirements in terms of people's interests. No, but they see you being unhappy. They see you, you know, being uh, um, arrested by the police. They see that. That's what I'm, the real yeah. question. Well, but that would have to, that, what's that would the problem, presume that I'm unhappy, wouldn't it? The fact you can, well, you, you can, can get arrested <laughs> and you can pass out without being unhappy. You but know? you can't be happy about that, can you? <laughs> no, I'm not happy about that. No. My God, no. 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 no, my God, no. I mean, this year, this, this year, this last eight months, I have to say, and not because of the media, but because, I mean, it hasn't helped having people parked outside my house 24 hours a day. But because I felt I'd done something wrong, and yet I was getting very confusing information as to how, how, how I should move forward. Because you can't really, I suppose you can't test for, for insomnia or how long someone's been awake or whatever. But I'd done three shows in five days. I'm 43 years old. I had not performed my own show for 15 years. And I can honestly say this year, at the same time as being exciting, has been the most stressful year of my life professionally. But I mean, look, I mean, at the end of it, no matter what happens, mm -hmm. nothing's going to change the situation that you, 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 you uh, complain about, about people being outside your mm -hmm. house, about the media or anything mm -hmm. like that. So you've got to live with it, haven't you? Well, yeah, only I'm, I'm thinking, again, not because of the media, because that's something you just have to learn to live with. But because of the response to other pe of other people to this kind of media, I have started thinking for the first time in my life that actually maybe I shouldn't be living here, you know, which, which is... Where would you, where would you go? Which is... I think, I think the honest truth is there are places I could live and still be able to visit home where I would not have to worry about this kind of constant um, surveillance almost. Um, and I've got to think seriously about, about whether or not my love for my country is really keeping me somewhere which is not good for me, you know? Mm. Okay, well, do you ever think about it gets so much on top of you that you think about walking away from it, from the career and everything? 
Well, I'll never be able to walk away from what I do creatively. That's, you know, that's a given. I'm going to keep making music. I, as I, I, I've said before, I really, I think a lot of people think because the tour has been so uh, successful that I've changed my mind. But I really am thinking about, you know, this as being a, a wrapping up of some sorts. And the music I want to make in, in the future will be for people to come and get for free, you know. And that was the plan two years ago. It's still the plan, regardless of things that have happened. And, of course, now... There are people that are prepared to pay me for private performances that will pay for those recordings because the recordings are incredibly expensive. I spend millions, you know. I think I barely made the money back on my last album because mm. I spend so much in recording. But I still want to give that, time, that attention and, and amount of energy to it. But it can be financed by people who make me look poor, you know, <laughs> really. I'd like to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, listen, thanks for, for coming on the show and, and talking uh, so frankly about it. And uh, I'll see you at, at Wembley. It yeah, be... so you're coming along. I'm right? coming along, so it'd be great. George Michael. Thank you. a great Britain or who makes a great Britain well you're about to find out join me for a star-studded live show where we celebrate some of Britain's greatest talents nominees on the night include Gordon Ramsay Dame Helen Mirren Lewis Hamilton and Robbie Williams Greatest Britain's 2007 Monday at 9 <laughs> Parkinson is sponsored by Balsam deliciously continental biscuits My next guest is a comedian, author, actor, filmmaker, star of screen, both large and small, and that's only the half of it. He's clever, witty, charming, as well as being loaded. Makes you sick. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Fry. And well, here we are. Here we are again. Thank you. So, you're here to talk about the Kingdom, about the yes. TV, ITV series. What brought you back to TV drama after ten years away? Um, well, it's, it's always a question of good luck, really. I, I, um, I was approached by some people who had an idea of doing a drama series about a, uh, a solicitor in the country, and, uh, and I liked the idea, and I particularly liked the idea of a country town. Mm. So I think a lot of people in Britain live in little market towns rather than in cities. There's plenty of television about people living in cities and plenty of television about people living in, in, in the countryside. You're bollocks of the Glen and all that sort of thing. Bollocks and of the Glen. Uh, <laughs> and charming they are, don't get me wrong. They're very enjoyable and, and I love them. And yeah. you can bury yourself in them. And, uh, but I live very near a market town and I was telling the writer and producer this. I was saying, you know, I swaff them. I said, in Norfolk where I live, it's a lovely little market town and... Uh, and yet it's not the same as the country, and it's certainly not the same as the city. In some ways, it's more of each. A policeman there told me it's easier, uh, easier to buy drugs in, in Swaffham Market than it would be in Soho Square. <laughs> Which Go there, you're not there. And Can also, we, start the car. Because you know, I'm, I'm way out of it in Highgate. Oh, you know no, what I mean? yeah. no good there at all. <laughs> oh, heavens above. No. It's, uh, it's, it's lovely to be reminded again of how beautiful England is. I think it, so. And, you know, there's such a thing as Sunday night television, which I think is different from any other night of the week. You know that awful feeling you used to have it yeah, when you were a child? Your and, homework. Yeah, there was songs of praise, and this kind of a hot lead would leak into your stomach as you thought about the next day. <laughs> and you want, you want a souffle to dive into. I mean, every other day of the week, they can pull livers out of rape victims and talk about <laughs> serial killers and do all the unpleasant things that television offers in such charming abundance. But just for one night to have something that is... Kind of like an old cup of tea in a, yeah. from a brown yeah. china teapot, yeah. you know, rather than a, a, a latte with hazelnut and vanilla essence in it. You know, just something, <laughs> something just, just so. I, I love know? that idyllic view of, of, of English life, you know, I, I really do. It's such a beautiful country. And I, I love mm. that John Major got you know, criticised for it. I love that view he had of England, you know, the mm. pub and the Warm thatch, beer and the vicar on the bicycle. Vicar. That's right, and the, mm. the cricket field and all Well, that. I like the fact that it may well be that, because the, the, the infrastructure, as they would say now, is there. The beautiful churches, the, the, you know, the remarkable organisations, whether it's the Women's Institute or the Mother's Union or whatever it might be, that sort of bind the community together. Plus... 
you get a better lens, as it were, into how Britain works in, in, in the country yes. than you do in the city yeah, again. Sure, sure. I mean, the, the local law offices in, in small market towns in, in East Anglia, for example, you will regularly see written in gold letters on the window, Estonian and Latvian spoken. You know, you wouldn't see that in, in Hampstead or Highgate. Uh, it, it, is a, it is a place where the, uh, the, the workers who come over yes. from Central Europe are in abundance and all the problems that they have. We also have in, in Swaffham, of course, the great, uh, great Asbo Lottery Chav, uh, um, <laughs> about whom a programme was made, in fact. So you see it all. You see your hoodie pikey chavis, you see your, <laughs> you see, you see your happy slapping, but, but it's but. leavened by a little bit of fluffy Englishness and a, a like damp it. tweed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just what it should be. Uh, let's have a look at some... some the, this, actually, is quite, quite a racy bit. This is coming out on Sunday, this Sunday, oh, tomorrow. Right. And this is uh, a scene where you, you visit to make a reconciliation between man and wife, and the man has a curious choice of wardrobe. Let us uh, say. Robert Bathurst, very fine actor. Very nice. yes, Robert Bathurst, very, very fine actor indeed. Mm. So that's on tomorrow night on, on ITV1. Mm. Um, and then, of course, you, you've got starring in America, in Bones, right? <laughs> well, Gosh almighty. I, that was a sort of accident, really. I had to, had to be in America for a meeting with Peter Jackson, the director, who lives in uh, Wellington, New Zealand. And Los Angeles is more or less halfway between Wellington and London. And he was asking me to write a screenplay for a film. So we the had this Busters. meeting. The Dam Busters, a, a, a new film on yeah. the Dam Busters, the great raid of the 617 Squadron and all mm. that. And the man has gone and the unfortunate code word and the music and all the wonderful things about that story, which I was greatly looking forward to. But my agent in America said, oh, would you do a, an episode of this series Bones, which I have to confess I hadn't heard of. But they sent around a DVD and I watched it and it seemed very charming and they sent around a script. And then I said to my friend Hugh Laurie, who is American television, my word course, is I said, uh, what do you know of this Bones? He said, oh, they're awfully nice. They just live around the corner on the Fox lot. He said, so, you know, I thought it'd be <laughs> rather sweet to do an episode and... Uh, Say, say hello to my colleague, you know. So, so I, I did this episode and uh, we would have lunch together, which greatly annoyed him in some ways because he, for very good reasons, playing an American in his series House, keeps his American accent all day. It would be rather stupid to dive in and out of it. And, and so, of course, he finds it very embarrassing if an English person comes and goes, Hi, great to see you, Steve. How are you doing? You know, <laughs> you, know, you step out of it, man. <laughs> 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 on, on the other hand... Uh, if he lopes forward and goes, hello, what ho, oh, hello, hello, the Americans are going, what is Hugh Laurie doing? <laughs> so, so he's kind of trapped between two actors. But anyway, we, we had a great day. And then they asked me to do two more episodes. And then they asked me to do the rest of the series, which sadly I couldn't do. But I did have a great time. It's a very odd thing, American television, because it's a... Well, it's, you know, they make 24 episodes. Uh, yes. uh, and you've got about seven or eight days to do each hour episode, at least a, an hour minus the commercials. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, and they have very little time, but they have a stupendous amount of money. So simply anything that goes wrong, they just throw another camera, another crew, and, they, and at three in the morning on the, on the Fox lot, for example, um, it's busier than at three in the afternoon. There are golf carts going backwards and forwards. There's Kiefer Sutherland over there blowing up terrorists. There's you know, Hugh Laurie sort of pulling something out of somebody's bottom. And there's a, um, and me sort of, you know, pretending. And, but it, it, it is absolutely extraordinary yeah. how, how alive it is there. Yeah. And people say to me, gosh, you must envy Hugh. And I, I, I admire enormously what he's done. And I, I've always envied him, his talent, his good looks, his charm, and all the rest of it. So in that sense, I don't envy him any more than I ever did. But I do recognise that he works phenomenally yeah, hard. Yeah. I mean, it is, the, the idea that he goes off and then has you know, dinner with Brad Jelena in the evening or whatever is, <laughs> is nonsense, because he's, he, he arrives home at 11 in the evening and falls on the, <laughs> falls on the bed and then he's up at 6. But you're, you're doing yeah, an American TV series, aren't you? Well, there, there's, um, there's a new uh, kind of drama stroke comedy called Eli Stone that Johnny Lee Miller is in. I think it's to make him a star in America. But yes, so, so they, they've asked me to, to... I'm in the first... I'm a vision in the first... You're in the always first, I'm a, a vision, vision John. <laughs> I'm a vision. And uh, so apparently... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What was that? Who, who was on the, the night you had Will Young on and everybody De said... Little Britain. 
Oh, David Williams. Oh, yeah, we, we, the, I mean, the, the switchboard never stopped for two days. Well, I hope you're not, you're not <laughs> doing a David Williams on me, I'm leering. Oh, Ziff, no. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly calf-eyed. <laughs> but, yeah, so, so I mean, they're going to use my music, <laughs> apparently, apparently, um, for the whole series. They want to name each episode after a track of mine, so... But, but you, oh, you, you've actually met before, haven't you? You, you did a, a part of a documentary that you're George, doing George on, was on... kind enough to consent to be interviewed by me. By, I, I did this documentary last year, which we talked about, about manic yes. depression. Yes. And, uh, and the, the, the BBC were very pleased with it. And, uh, but it so had a huge response. It, it did have a yeah. huge response, and yeah. it was uh, a very... Pleasing that it should, because mental health is an incredibly important issue. And, of course, it's, you know, to persuade the BBC to do a programme that had the word depression in the title yeah. was something, because <laughs> they just think, oh, God, what a turn-off. But actually, people watch. There isn't anybody watching here in the audience or anybody watching at home who doesn't know somebody for whom mental stability, uh, mood stability, is, is an issue. Uh, and it has been for me for most of my life, and I'm not embarrassed or ashamed about it any more than I am the, the fact that I occasionally get asthma. You know, it's a part of my body that doesn't always work absolutely uh, at its best. Yes. And, and it's this terrible wall of silence about it. We are so embarrassed and shocked by it. And even if you were to say it is the right thing to do, to embrace and, and welcome and try and understand what it is not to be happy, not because of all the reasons there are to be unhappy and to do with, you know, mortgages and all the other problems people have, but simply because your body is making you unhappy, like a kind of internal weather. Even if that wasn't the right thing to do, the money we are wasting, I mean, it's, it's incalculable how many days off people take yes, because, because there is something wrong in their head. They will never say it. They will, well, sometimes if they're brave, they'll say it. And usually they'll say it's, oh, it's a back problem or it's flu. So we're losing billions and we're losing, you know, labour capital, if you do, want to do call it Do you think it changed anything? I mean, you got, by, I mean, one thing you did happen was this week, this very week, in fact, you got the Mind Award, didn't yes, you? Yes, they, they that, made uh, me very kindly, made is, me Mind Champion, yeah, which is a great yeah, honour. Yeah. Um, I, I think because trying to address this issue of stigma is so important to them, they're the biggest mental health charity in, in the country, and they see it all the time. Whether it changes anything, I don't know. I think all kinds of things have changed in Britain in the last 20 years. You and I are both gay. We would have found that quite difficult to say 20 years yes, ago. Sure. We find it perfectly simple to say now and not indeed make a huge issue of it. Yes. Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, it's, I think it's been a little simpler for you than for me. Well, no, it was harder for you. I yeah, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't think it's any hard. I think it's much easier to come out. I think it should be, it should be, you know, I shouldn't have, life shouldn't have become more um, difficult for me with the media mm. after I came out, but that was definitely the case. Mm. But to, I don't know if I could, if I was to, to look at a young performer who was in my position, mm. um, I don't know, know. I wouldn't, I, I don't know whether I would be able to say, hand on my heart, that they were doing the cleverest thing to come out, because mm. I, I've, my experience of it has been so vile, you know. I mean, being followed around in the middle of the night and having complete strangers that are, you have absolutely you've absolutely never seen their face, let alone the rest of them, <laughs> right? <laughs> to, have su to have to deal with, with people's homophobia, I think it's terrible that my experience has turned into something yeah. that other people could, could actually... I hate the fact that young gay people can see that and think, well, how, how successful do you have to be before it stops mattering, mm. you know? I th you have been unlucky, and I wouldn't underestimate that, and well, I wouldn't say that... that the except to say, though, I mean, I mean, if you are this famous man, you know that you're going to be recognised in it, well, then, then, then why do you put yourself but not, at risk? not at 2.30 in the morning, I'm sorry. Well, any time. If no, I no, George, any time. No, the, the, you know, the people who are out to get you in your, in your by your side, they, they never sleep. I mean, there's money involved. You so, know. What do you su but what well, do you suggest that I don't live my life? Well, uh, you, that's you have, where I well, wanted to be, to be at that point. Well, you have to be as careful as any yeah. famous person is. Yeah, but why? 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 Because, because, because it ends up in the, in the newspapers yeah, I know, and you but, end up being unhappy. But no, that's no, no, the why. I promise you, I promise you, it being in the paper did not make me unhappy. What's made me very unhappy this year is what happens as a result of some of those things. So to you all. But being in the paper, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, no, but, but being in the yeah. paper, I promise you, that's not the bad bit. That's not the no. bad bit. And, and if, if, and believe me, I, I, th I think that the sex that I have is worth being in the paper for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You're a suicide, and I yeah. don't wish to un undermine it, but in the yeah, end, yeah. you have to understand that our lives, yours and mine, yours perhaps more than mine, but I don't think that's necessarily true, we, we, they are picnics. Mm -hmm. and, and every picnic... <laughs> 
is occasionally afflicted by wasps. Mm -hmm. And, and <laughs> I'm, I'm, not making, I'm not being trivial here, although it sounds like a joke. It is simply the point that sometimes you want to leave the picnic and you just think it's not worth having a picnic because there's dog turds on the grass and there are wasps <laughs> and it's ruining the picnic. But at other times you recognise this really is a picnic. Yeah, absolutely. And for the, sometimes the wasps don't get you, yeah. and you don't mind. Yeah, and that's um, the thing. That you know, I, what, I, I, what I think is much more important is for me is that actually I don't I don't think that that young gay people should be exposed to the language that gets used legally about people like you and me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that should change. I really do. Other than well, that, you know, it really doesn't make any difference to my life. Yeah. You know? Well. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we've covered most of I think we've covered most things now. Yeah. We haven't done AIDS and HIV, which you're doing, of that's, course. That's what that, I was doing, doing with George. George, George very kindly did an interview with me that. and was characteristically trenchant in his views. And Joan will be here in a minute, so we'll all have to shut up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stephen, uh, uh, congratulations on, on Kingdom and, and all the rest. And uh, I won't bother now listing the, the other projects you're involved <laughs> with. It would take, like, all day. But... Um, it's, it's a lot, and are you ever likely to sort of stand back a bit and smell the roses, do you think? June 2008, I have a day off. Good. So I'm very excited. <laughs> Stephen Fry, thank you very much. Thank you. A 22-year-old Brit is rewriting Formula One history. Pinch yourself. Lewis Hamilton leads the World Championship. And it's so confident. Now, on to Monte Carlo. And now there's a real pressure on the shoulders of Lewis Hamilton. The Monaco Grand Prix, live and exclusive, next weekend, ITV1. Parkinson is sponsored by Balsam, deliciously continental biscuits. Music now from one of the most flamboyant and exciting bands in pop music today. Here with Kiss You Off from their double platinum second album, Tada. Please welcome the Scissor Sisters. <laughs> my, my final guest once said she knew she was an unwanted baby when she saw her bath toys were a toaster and a radio. <laughs> <laughs> She's been entertaining us for 50 years with her withering observations of the world we live in. She's about to host Miss Great Britain. Do our girls know what they're in for? Ladies and gentlemen, Joan Rivers. Ah, <laughs> uh, good to see you again. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> and I am a dyke. <laughs> and I'm fucking proud of it. <laughs> it's all so stupid, you know. I, you know, who cares? But I do love gays the best. Well, I mean, yeah. uh, <laughs> give me a gay man and it, dyke in the front row, forget it, they don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny. But gay men, you know, ha 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 ha. They've always been, uh, the, the beginning of your, your career, they, yes. they were the, the audience First. that sort of made you famous, weren't they? Yes, they, thank yeah. God. Yeah. Thank God. And I'm playing the GAY club. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, and Saturday night, so they you better show up. <laughs> you know who you are. You're wearing a sundress as you're watching this. And, uh, <laughs> well, what was the appeal, do you think? What do they, they see in you that they like? Um, I, <laughs> just <laughs> uglier than they. <laughs> I, uh, I just think gay men just like women that laugh, where straight men do not like women who laugh. Don't they? Well, when you're in bed and you go, that's it. <laughs> they get you. <laughs> Joke's over, where's your penis? <laughs> and, <you> know, <laughs> It ruined my wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, let's go right into it. Well, First how, of all, how's the trip over? The trip over was amazing. I came over. I'm into charity. Unlike you two, that just a self-centered. Mm. I am a very giving bitch. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I came over. We're doing. There's a new charity in America. You have. Um, 
uh, save the children over here. Mm -hmm. We have shaved the children. Which I... <laughs> Because the pain, and I felt this of being a seven-year-old girl with a mustache, doesn't mean <laughs> So I got together a whole group, <laughs> a whole group of people that love children. So we had Angelina and Brad, because oh, those kids, they don't stop, you know. Uh, I think she has in her basement a factory. I think <laughs> it's child labor. This is not a dumb bitch. I think she adopts them. They get to be seven. They go into the basement. They make clothes. <laughs> now, you're over here yes. to host... <laughs> Oh, Miss, Great Miss Great Britain. Britain. Those poor bitches. I know. They're, they're, oh, God. They're taking it so serious. I know they <laughs> I went today to rehearsal, and, it, and it's Monday night, and I'm getting all excited. It's a grown house, and it's big. You know, it means something to them, mm -hmm. Miss Great it Britain. Does. And you know, and, and it's a wonderful thing, but they got the wrong chicken here. And it's, uh, <laughs> collectively, they're all so thin; they look like a reunion of Schindler's List. I mean, it's like. <laughs> does the tampon make me look fat? <laughs> <laughs> They're just hilarious. And someone said, which is absolutely, and you should, as a judge, we're there to encourage them, you know. And they said, learn their names. Well, they're 50 women. So I figured out, if you want to get some, you just say, hey, tramp. They all turn around. <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah. have to ask them questions. You have to interview them about yeah. their ambitions and that. Yeah, so sure. they don't want to be. And they're morons. <laughs> <laughs> The they brains used to have, went a, to they the used to have a lovely man who would always say, but you'd better get your skates on because Miss Suffolk likes fell walking. <laughs> yeah, it would always be this. Do, do, are they divided? Are they Miss Bucks and Miss Hants and Miss uh, they're, the they're, counties? They're or the little counties. Miss South Humberside yes. and so on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, they, and the mums are there, you know, they're all, oh, she's so pretty. And then they have some older women too, which is wonderful. But, you know, that, that a, like it's a mother-daughter team. <laughs> Can you imagine if mom, if the daughter wins, you stupid bitch, you won! <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I think it's, it's, it's going to be so much fun. Do they differ, uh, from, from you, the pageants that you call them in America? Oh, they're just as stupid. Are they? <laughs> <laughs> Miss America saw a sign that said wet floor, and she did. It was... <laughs> <laughs> Last time they met, it was brutal. Skelton triumphed and took the Commonwealth belt. Both fight Skelton and they go for what's out. No one is backing down. Michael Scott now is the man who I need to fight to go onto the world stage. The Big Fight, live next Saturday at 10.25. Parkinson is sponsored by Bowles and deliciously continental biscuits. Well, you, you've all said and could the cook gives up all the time how unattractive you were as a, oh. as a young woman. <laughs> Darling, I mean, I, I, you had to be funny. I, I, my mother, when I was born, the, the, the doctor looked at me and looked at the afterbirth and handed my mother the afterbirth. <laughs> They found me, luckily, in a garbage can two weeks later. <laughs> Angelina found me. <laughs> what do you think, Brad? <laughs> she can sew hems, you know. Did it, did, it have a, did it have a scarring effect on a you? Scarring effect? <laughs> a scarring effect? You silly man. A scarring effect my whole life. <laughs> Oh, when you're not attractive, and, and you know you're a straight man. You two, you know, you, we're not going to go here. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but if I, 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 you know, my gynecologist examines me over the phone. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just, if I, flies wouldn't sit on me if I was in cheap shit. I mean, it's like, it just... 
doesn't work. Did it? But did it? Did it have an effect on your sex life? Oh. It was long term. Oh, sex. <laughs> long term. I mean, thank I'll... God, my, I put a face on my vibrator. <laughs> 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 It just there is no sex life. <laughs> these oh, and there should be now with these older gentlemen. There so, should be yes. Well, well Viagra, <gasps> Viagra Plus. Do you have that here? Yes, yeah, Viagra do. Plus. Do which, we? Where? Uh, well, you have Viagra. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. Viagra Plus. This is I'm not making a joke. In the United States, it's 36 hours of erection, <laughs> so you can be ready when she is. Well, these <laughs> these poor old wives. These like 90 year old guys. You know. <laughs> Poor dry wives in and out, they're setting them on fire. <laughs> That's in California now. The fires, if you've been hearing about the fires. <laughs> the Malibu fires were started by my neighbor. <laughs> Harry Schwartz, 92. Come here, baby. That was it. Malibu. Fucking Malibu was in flame because he had Viagra Plus. Oh, it's dear. just awful. You know, bodies go. It just, they uh, do, don't they? Have, have, have you had any more work done since last I saw you? Oh, I, do I have 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... I I, you look, I'm, he's very good, actually. Look great. I don't do... Everyone thinks, oh, she does so much. Uh, but they all... Every woman out there and every man... You should look good. That's what the whole thing is about. And I hate it when they say, I've done nothing. Yeah. Sophia Lauren, God bless her, allegedly. <laughs> Sophia Lauren, I mean, she's another neighbor of mine. It's been pulled and snipped and she shits through her ears. <laughs> I mean, the woman is like, and she says to me, she says, I've done nothing. And you want to go, you can run a railroad up the back of your head. <laughs> They took all the extra parts and they made another woman that walks right beside her. <laughs> I see her in her garden walking with like a little mini me. <laughs> oh dear. You actually, of course, you went down to speaking of <laughs> encroaching age. You, you, you went down recently to, to God's Waiting Room, Miami, didn't you? Oh, you, you God's did some work. Waiting Room. You did oh. some work down there. Oh, they are. Old people and hookers can live together. It is just um, women, all widows. So you go like to a, a disco, women dancing with urns. It is just so, <laughs> so sad, you know. Old, and they go on the beach and they think they're hot, you know. And they'll have like a cute little bathing suit with a uh, oxygen tank covered a match, you know. That's, and the vaginas are on, you know. The, oh, that's. Can we talk seriously? Yeah, we can. We, like, we may for a moment. You talk about depression. Mm. They should tell people, I truly believe this, because I go through great depressions, as many of us do. Um, but, you know, tell me what is happening in my life. I can tell you what. No one ever said, your vagina is going to drop. If mothers <laughs> say that to a daughter, if my mother had said to me, Parky, Joan, when you're 60 years old and you're going through menopause, yes, your vagina will drop, and it's a good thing because you can wipe your forehead with it. It would have been a good thing. Joan, you're 50 years old. You can watch TV in the living room and have sex in the bedroom at the same time. It's a good thing. Thank you. You can deal with anything, uh, you know, because old people, uh, they don't tell you how difficult it is. No. no you know, it, it's... Um, it, it's it, easier for a man. That's oh, it's for much sure. easier, for, much a easier for a man. It certainly is. It's interesting, actually, um, um, talking to you about... Because I watched you on, this week on television talking very movingly, actually, about, yes. about, your, about your... Widowhood. Your widowhood. It, yeah. uh, that was a fascinating program. It six different women dealing with a situation. And I was fascinated by... By your story as well. I, I didn't see how they finally cut it together. Well, my husband committed suicide. That's right, yeah. And, 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 and you, you were angry about it. You said you had angry? lots of anger. Yeah. Angry? Yeah. I'm a son of a bitch. If he came back, I'd kill him now. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you ruined my daughter's fucking life, you son of a bitch. Take this, bang. You want to die? Come over here. I mean, it was horrible. I mean, it was just, um, it, it's suicide is something that should not happen. Yes. And it's, uh, and when people mm. are struggling so for life, you know, I worked with pediatric AIDS, you know, we all do all this stuff, and then you see, but then the pain is so intense, 
I understand that too, because I work on suicide uh, prevention. You do? Yeah, but my, my poor husband, and it was my fault, because uh, we were making love and I took the bag off my head. <laughs> <laughs> From the bed to the window, one step. Where are you going? He's like, stupid you. He was gone. <laughs> but you deal with it, by as you do I with I deal everybody. with humor. Yeah, I deal course, with everything right, exactly. with humor. It's horrible. It, it's interesting, because you, are, of course, contemplated suicide yourself. You told oh, yeah. me the story on the yeah. show. Yeah. And, and so did you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. And so did you, George. Uh, there was a man, three um, people who can't... There was a man in my film, a naval officer, who had worked on the yacht Britannia, and, and I don't know if you remember seeing him, but he showed me his legs, which were just in the most appalling condition. He walked in front of a lorry... And the result was bones sticking out everywhere. Unbelievably, he survived. Um, and I saw pictures of the most appalling, crushed legs. You've never seen anything quite so horrific. And he had about six months of recovery in the most appalling agony. And I said to him, how, how much did it hurt? He said, oh, well, a great deal less than the pain that wanted me to end my life. And that's really the point. You use the word pain. It's very hard, of course, for people who don't understand why someone would want to end their life. They think because they're a bit pissed off or they want to get at someone. It's actually pain. It's okay, pain. It's a in... physical thing. And it's a physical self. thing. Yeah. It's... And, and the self hatred that is so intense that there is no possibility of wanting to live mm. anymore. I mean, uh, you know, people looking would say there's three people that are incredibly successful in what they do, you know, well off and all. Suicide? I mean, what, what's wrong with them? If it was logical. If it's logical, then of course it would be absurd, but yeah. it doesn't work like that, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. By, that, by that measure, we should all be happy just cause we're, because we're so famous, shouldn't we, you know, yeah. on that basis. I mean, I think m I spend much of my time absolutely, absolutely appreciating just how privileged I am and just how, um, how blessed most of us are, yes. most of the people yeah. I know sure, are. Sure. But, I mean, you know, you're... Something like, I mean, for instance, with me, I don't think it was, I don't think there was any point that took me to it other than bereavement. That but we all died. have, we all, under, yeah, my mother died. We all understand <coughs> that kind of pain eventually, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, really, it's the kind of pain which is absolutely makes you physically incapable of doing, doing anything about mm -hmm. it, really. You know, that kind of feeling where literally yeah. you're having to, the effort of putting one foot in front of the other, you know. But do you know what Winston Churchill said, and every time I'm really depressed, he said, when you're walking through hell, walk faster. Mm. The whole thing is move out of it, move forward. And that's what I make myself yeah. do. Move on. Yeah, good. Okay. Well, listen, that's, all the best. I love you. It's so good to be here. Ah, it's great to have you. Free trip. Here. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best thing of all. Did we give you a return ticket? Uh, no. No, we should. That's because they want to keep you here. That's right. Joan Rivers. <laughs>